All right. My clock shows seven o'clock, so we are going to get started. We're so thankful that you're going to spend time with us tonight. My name is Bobby Gandu. I'm an assistant vice president and director of admissions. It's our great pleasure to have you here today. Our goal is to better connect you with Wichita State tonight. And to do that, I'm going to share a presentation and get you better acclimated to the university and all that we have going on. Uh, but then additionally, you're going to have an opportunity to hear from some of my colleagues who work at the university in various academic colleges from our housing team, financial aid, and other student service areas as well. Uh, then we will come back together. We're going to be doing that, by the way, in a breakout room fashion. So uh, we'll kind of give you some guidance and tips on that when we get to that portion of the night. Then we will transition back to this room that we're in now, this bigger Zoom room, and have an opportunity to hear from some of our current students at Wichita State, uh, our student ambassadors. They're going to be able to answer uh, a lot of the questions you may have about the student experience. And then toward the end of the night, we will do a uh, we'll do some um, trivia questions and provide some prizes for students and, and parents uh, who are able to uh, uh, answer those questions correctly. And then finally, at the very end of the night, we'll do a drawing for a $1,000 scholarship uh, for a high school senior who has applied for admission or a transfer student who's in that same category. So that being said, we are recording this tonight, and our plan is to send this out as a follow-up uh, after the event, so you should be able to get that via your email here in the next day or so, so you can look forward to that. Of course, feel free to take notes now if you want, but just know that that recording will be coming your way, too. All right, so first up for tonight, our president could not be here this evening, but he certainly wanted to send his regards, so if I can get my video to play, uh, I have a quick video from him. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Muma, the president of Wichita State, and we're honored that you've chosen to spend time with us to learn more about all that Shocker Nation has to offer. I think our university is a really special place, and I hope through your conversations with our staff and students today that you'll leave our event wanting to learn more about why Wichita State may be the right fit for you. Our university has existed for more than 125 years, and while I'm biased, I think this may be the best time ever to be a Shocker. If you haven't been on campus at all or recently, you may not know that just in the last handful of years alone, we've opened up 120 acres of space on campus that features two new residence halls, a best-in-class YMCA, a restaurant and retail center, and most importantly, connections with local and global businesses and organizations where all of our students have research and applied learning experiences. Our classrooms are literally yards away from resume boosting internships with companies like Airbus, Deloitte, Spirit Aerosystems, Textron Aviation, and NetApp. Our faculty are thought leaders in their field conducting research and provide instruction that can be applied to real world settings right away. On top of that, our students are engaged with one another through campus activities, speakers, and concerts, and cheering on our NCAA Division I athletic teams. While I know the college search process may feel overwhelming at times, I want to wish you and your family the very best as you move forward. Know that all of us at Wichita State are here for you and anxious for you to get to know us a little better. Thanks again for taking the time to attend our event today, and I do hope to see you on campus for a visit soon. Go Shockers! Hello everyone. All right, that's our president, Dr. Rick Muma. So uh, let's get you better acquainted with Wichita State. So we think this is a really exciting time to be a shocker. The university has been around for 128 years. And in fact, we've enrolled the largest freshman classes the last three years in a row. We also were named the number one transfer destination in Kansas for the last 12 years in a row, meaning that students who start at a two-year college or even a four-year university and, and um, in Kansas end up transferring to Wichita Wichita State at a higher rate than students at two other four-year universities. Uh, and to keep up with all that enrollment growth that we've had, uh, we have been able to build new buildings and make major renovations to our campus. Uh, it's important to us that we provide the infrastructure on our campus so that students are able to learn and uh, interact with one another in very modern settings. Uh, enrollment has been uh, really an exciting topic around our campus. Uh, just last Last week, we announced that this fall semester, we had the highest enrollment we've ever had in 128 year history of the university. So we think this is an exceptional time to be a student at Wichita State. 
Uh, you can also see that we have uh, added um, uh, nearly 640,000 square feet of new dorms on our campus. And all of our dorms are less than 10 years old. So for our students who are living on campus, it's a very modern experience. Later on tonight, you'll hear me talk a little bit more about internships. We just think that is the way our students really connect and build their LinkedIn profile and their resumes and really set themselves up for success post-college. Uh, and then we have data from our Kansas Board of Regents that also showcases that our grads tend to earn more money and have higher job placement rates in Kansas than the grads from other universities in Kansas. And by the way, I should mention that I know, of course, we have folks uh, from all over the country that are uh, listening in to this and watching our 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 uh, event tonight. Um, so while uh, some of this is specific to Kansas, uh, I have some other slides that will speak to some of the things that you all might be interested from out of state as well. So uh, here's a quick 30 second clip to showcase some of the things that are going on at Wichita State these days. So here's a quick overview of the university. So as I mentioned earlier, we announced uh, a high enrollment, the highest ever in the university history. Uh, just last week, 17,500 plus students. We are NCA Division I. So for those of you who might be looking for uh, an experience at a institution that meets that rank, uh, we are happy to provide that for you. Uh, we actually just announced that we are adding a 16th NCA Division I sport, and that's women's bowling. So that was uh, exciting news. We've actually had intercollegiate bowling for a long time, for decades, in fact, but we haven't ha had it at the NCAA Division I level. So just within the last few weeks, we announced that women's bowling would be our next NCAA Division I sport starting next fall. You can see we have a whole range of majors, areas of study. Uh, we are a medium-sized university. What that means is that for our students' benefit, uh, more than 93% of our classes have fewer than 50 students in them. So for some students who might be coming from perhaps a larger high school, where you, maybe your class sizes are anywhere between 20, 30 uh, to 35 students, um, our, some of our classes really won't be much bigger than what you're used to. On our campus, we just don't have large residence halls that you might uh, be familiar with or have heard of at large universities. Um, we are excited to offer our students kind of more of a medium size experience uh, through Wichita State. Uh, you can also see on the slide here that we offer uh, our students took advantage of more than 8,000 applied learning experiences. You're going to keep hearing that theme tonight because it's just so important for us to for you to know that we see that as our niche. We focus on outcomes, on internships, and other applied learning experiences. And the last couple of things you see here is that if you are a student who might be the first in your family to graduate from a four-year university, or what we call first generation, then you're going to have some good company at Wichita State. We are excited to have so many first-generation students on our campus uh, because we know the power of higher, edu higher education changes the trajectories of families and students. So we're excited to be the destination for many first-generation students. And then uh, finally, on the slide here. Uh, we are the most diverse university in Kansas, and we're really proud of that. We feel like that helps our students acclimate uh, to a lot of people who maybe they didn't go to high school with or attend a community college with. Uh, because, And that's so important because once you graduate from college and you enter med school or graduate school, or you go on to your first job out of college, you're typically surrounded by people who are very different from you. And because you've been exposed to people from all walks of life um, in our college classrooms, that can really just help you um, be more successful as you transition into the next phase of your uh, college and uh, career uh, after Wichita State. Next up, uh, we want to make sure, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we know there's people from all over the country who are watching our live event right now. And so we wanted to spend some time to tell you a little bit about the city of Wichita. We are the largest city in Kansas, and that's something we're really proud of. Uh, we have more than a half million people living in our greater metropolitan area. You can see some of our claims to fame about things that we offer or uh, national organizations, websites that have listed us uh, with specific titles. A couple of my favorites are top 10 surprise 
enterprising foodie city. For those of you who might be from Wichita, I certainly hope you agree with that. Uh, we have really uh, a diverse set of restaurants from in you know from very traditional local places to also uh, national change, but also really awesome food trucks too. So you kind of name the genre of food, and we probably have you covered here in the Wichita area. Uh, and you can see lots of other titles. The reason we think it's important for you to know about the city of Wichita is, is that we're really proud to be in the city of Wichita. We know the success of Wichita State is linked to the success of the city of Wichita. Our students get to benefit from everything that's going on in our community. So they get the benefits of a college campus and a college setting, but then they can go out into our city and enjoy everything that we have going on, whether it's our downtown arena or some of our festivals that you see in the picture here. Uh, we have major concerts that come to town. We have cultural attractions, museums, uh, all kinds of things for our students to do. And perhaps the best benefit for our students is that means they have access to a lot of large companies, organizations who might be able to hire them for internship experience or even post-college job placement. Uh, so we always want to make sure we we familiarize our students from out of town with this. But for those of you who might be from Wichita, you should also know that there's a real benefit to attending your hometown university because you're going to get the best of both worlds. You're going to get a larger urban setting, but you're also going to get that traditional college experience too. So to help you get better acquainted with our campus, I have a quick hyperlapse video that will show you some of the views of our campus today. So one of the things we weren't able to include in that video uh, because we're in the process of building it right now is our Shocker Success Center. So we are really excited about this. This is a construction project that is going on right in the middle of campus. Uh, our business school actually just last fall moved into a brand new $65 million building. Uh, when they did, they vacated this building that you're seeing here in this rendering. It's Clinton Hall, but soon it will become the Shocker Success Center, and it's scheduled to open as early as this coming summer or perhaps very early fall, depending on how the construction timeline moves. And what we're doing in this space is dedicated to student success, as you might imagine. It's a $17 million project where we are taking all the the services and a few others that you don't even see listed here. These services, by the way, exist in many different buildings on our campus. We have a 330 acre campus and these services and offices are spread out to about 12 different buildings. Well, our Shocker Success Center is going to bring them all into one building in the center of campus right next to our student center. So what that means is if you are a student who might need some tutoring in a particular subject area, normally you would have to go to a particular building on our campus and you might get redirected somewhere else. We're, we're, we're gonna be able to ha house our entire office of student success in this building, which will include tutoring services. It'll also include our math lab, which right now is in a different building, and then our writing center, which right now is in a third different building. So you get the idea. We're bringing and aligning all of these services into one building in the middle of campus, which on one side is our student center, and then on the other side is our library. We're purposefully putting it into a high traffic area because we want students to walk through this space every single day and get all of the help that they need to be successful students. In addition to that, a couple of extra services that will be moved to this building as well. Our Shocker Career Accelerator team, they uh, coordinate our career closet where our students can go if they have a job interview coming up and they need uh, something nice to wear for that interview, then our career closet can provide that for free. Some of our students may be food insecure or uh, have need for personal hygiene items. Well, through our Shocker uh, 
support locker, we are able to offer items for free in terms of food, clothing, and other personal hygiene items. So many different services are available in this office or in this building, and we look forward to that opening this summer. Uh, because our business school uh, vacated that building and moved into a brand new building, we're able to offer that. But I thought it'd be fun for you to see where our business school moved into. Uh, and it's this brand new $65 million building, Woolsey Hall. So I have a quick video tour that's going to showcase it for you. But I want to be careful to point out that really any student can go through this space every single day. And in fact, there's many non-business classes in this building as well. And in fact, our business school doesn't even teach classes on Friday. So that actually opens up the space to other classes. Uh, and then we've found that since it's been built, a lot of students who are non-business majors are just hanging out in there, uh, studying in there, use, utilizing a cafe that you'll see here in just a second. So here's a quick fly through to, tour of Woolsey Hall. <laughs> Get the idea we're pretty excited about it so moving on to something that's really applicable for all of our majors our shocker career accelerator uh by the way uh teresha's uh here from that office and you'll have an opportunity to meet with her a little bit later but our shocker career accelerator uh is really a special office on our campus where their goal is to connect with every single one of our students to help them with any service that those students need and it could range from the traditional career services where we're helping students with their LinkedIn profile or their resume or helping them prep for a job interview uh, to hosting career fairs. But they do so much more than that. One of their primary functions is to really help our students connect with internship positions and or on-campus uh, employment positions. So you see the stat here. Last year, our students had earned more than $28.5 million in internship and on-campus position wages, and that was spread across more than 8,000 different positions. Most of our students are able to find paid positions too. We think that's really important, not only because uh, we want our students to get paid, but because we know that's so important to helping our students offset the cost of higher education in college. Uh, and again, this all really translates well in terms of our students finding long-term job placement after they graduate from college. A couple of stories that I like to tell for the students that you see highlighted here. Uh, Lucas Webb is at the top right there. He's a young man who originally was from the Wichita area. He attended Wichita State, as you might imagine, as an aerospace engineering major. He had aspirations to go work at NASA, and we helped him with that and he had a great placement out at NASA site in California. And since then, he has graduated from Wichita State. He actually took a job with Lockheed Martin based in California originally, uh, but then he just transitioned, got a promotion to continue working with Lockheed Martin. But now he's working with a special division called Skunk Works with uh, Lockheed Martin. We just saw him. He helped us with a virtual event this past weekend, and he's doing really well out there. Uh, the young lady next to him at the top there, at the top left, uh, that is... Uh, 
uh, Sierra. Uh, she is a student who is originally from Salina, Kansas. And uh, excuse me, it's Ebony. I was, was uh, have my names uh, confused there. Uh, Ebony is originally from Salina, Kansas, and she is a Rudd Scholar uh, at Wichita State. And Ebony, uh, uh, her first uh, internship was uh, originally with an event center in Salina, but then she parlayed that experience into an internship with Deloitte Smart Factory on our campus, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Then she was out on the West Coast uh, working for Apple, as you can probably see in that picture. And then she also got an internship offer with Tesla, but she has since declined that offer with Tesla. And she decided to come back to our campus uh, and just be a regular student. So good for her that she made that choice. Um, but she's had some tremendous internship opportunities. She's just starting her senior year uh, and she's already had all of those experiences. And you see a couple of other students on, on the slide here too, but I'm gonna do you one better. I have another quick video that will show case, one of our students who actually had multiple internships out at NASA and then um, ultimately graduated and got a pretty good job. So here's a story about Alex. I remember going to a lot of well-known engineering uh, universities across the country and they were really focused at, look at all the cool things that we've done, look at all the great things that we've uh, accomplished. But when I came to Wichita State, I was really taken aback about their personal approach. Instead of looking at all, all our great things that we've done here, which Wichita has done great things, they were more geared towards, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to become as an engineer? You know, they really told me, if you're willing to put forth the effort, we will help get you there. And, and they came true to that word. I'm Alex Kanellakos. I am the Program Integration Manager for Lunar Surface Operations at the NASA Johnson Space Center. But we're going back to the moon, and so it's how do we figure that out? We haven't been there in over 60 years. How do we go back to the moon in a safer manner? How do we train the astronauts? Copy, you're going to hold the QDN. That's really my, my job, is overseeing the operations aspects of our, our return to the moon. It's a off. The advice I would give is definitely start looking at being involved on campus. I can't tell you how many people that NASA interviews, and everybody makes great grades, but what sets you apart is what type of leadership skills do you have? What type of networking or collaboration? And I think that that's really important is find a club that's built around your academics that you can get involved in. This is actually the arm of the spacesuit, so you can see the bladder. When I was looking uh, for colleges, I knew I wanted to work at NASA. So I was really trying to find a university that could help me to get me there. I think that that's one of the fortes of Wichita State is that they're able to connect you in your field with an employer while you're still a student. Looking now at all the new um, innovation space, I'm like, why didn't they have this when I was here? There are so many new labs and so much space to really apply your learning. It's obvious that the university has put a lot of thought of how can we match our students in with real employers and, and have it co-located here on campus. And by the way, Alex uh, still works and lives in Houston, but he's so gracious with his time. He's going to be back on campus next week uh, to be a part of the NASA representation uh, to meet with our students uh, during our science and engineering career fair. So, um, so really, he's just someone who's so connected to Wichita State. So we wanted to make sure you heard a little bit more about his story. So you may have caught at the tail end of his video there that he he's like, why did why didn't we have all these things when I was a student here? And he's right, we didn't have uh, a lot of things <laughs> when he was a student here uh, more than 15 years ago at this point. But what we have now really benefits our students. And so uh, in the slide here, you can see that um, this is about 120 acres of our 330 acre campus. So if I was to extend this whole slide out, uh, or at least the rest of the map part of it, you would see another two thirds of the kind of a rectangle filled in, and that's our main campus. But this, this slice of the map that you're seeing here used to be an 18 hole golf course as recently as a decade ago. So just 10 years ago, uh, if we were looking at this, you would have seen 18 you know, holes right on our campus. 
That being said, our, our president 10 years ago made a really courageous decision to close the golf course. And in its place, we have sprung up all the buildings that you see here in yellow and teal. Those are all done and finished. Many of the buildings that you see in gray are actually done too. Some of them are still kind of in the works. Uh, the point is, is that uh, this has brought new life to what was a golf course, meaning that we have all these companies and organizations who are on our campus today, and they have space in a brand new building on our campus. The catch is for them to have that space, they have to hire our students to intern right alongside their professionals. So our prime and first example of this was Airbus. Airbus, major aircraft manufacturer based in Europe, also had an operation in Wichita. We had more than 300 professional engineers working in downtown Wichita every day for years. Well, they uh, closed that operation in downtown and moved to a brand new building right on our campus. And what that meant was, our students uh, who might be in majoring in engineering or business or certain other majors would have an opportunity to intern alongside Airbus professionals every single day right on the same campus. So as we say, our students literally go from a classroom over to their internship on the same campus. So Airbus was one of the larger examples. Another example that I believe I have a picture of here is NetApp, and that's the top left that you see here. So NetApp uh, just opened uh, last summer, actually, a brand new um, Kansas headquarters right here in our building, or right here on our campus, where they have capacity to have about 400 professionals working there. Uh, and they have this building, they have a beautiful cafe in the middle of it. It's a really big deal. The governor came and opened it and everything. Uh, but our students actually have an opportunity to intern there and to actually go eat lunch there. It's a public cafe that's open. So our students can mix alongside professionals on a daily basis. And so you may be wondering what, what is incentivizing companies to come and have all this uh, space on a college campus? Well, as you might guess, it's workforce. Companies all over the world are desperate to have professional workforce, and they are excited to connect with our students right on our campus. They get to know our students when they're still students and see what their capabilities are. And then if things are going well, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to be offered a full-time job offer right out of college. So that's why all of these companies and organizations that you saw on this last slide are really excited to ha have space on our campus. So you see all of them here. But a couple of other companies that have space is our, at the top right, you see the Deloitte Smart Factory. Uh, Deloitte is a major global consulting company with sites all over the world. Well, they bring some of their clients into Wichita, Kansas to showcase the latest in factory technology. So if you're a company, you're getting to build a factory or perhaps complete restructure or revamp an existing factory, you're thinking about what technology is it that I should put in there? Well, those clients come to Wichita where their professionals, Deloitte professionals showcase the latest in factory technology, but then our students uh, get to work alongside those professionals and either help set up the visit uh, and or demonstrate the technology that you see uh, in that picture. So Ebony, who I mentioned earlier, she was one of the students who got to showcase um, the Deloitte Smart Factory to some of those clients that came through every single day. The lower right is just one of our favorite hangout spots for those of us on campus. That's called the social tab. So great pizza, great burgers. The lower left is kind of a one, uh, a new addition on our campus just this fall. It's just something fun that we like to talk about. Don't know if anybody knows what that is, uh, but I can tell you that those are uh, food delivery robots. So we just added these this fall semester. It is a app or it, it's run or coordinated by an app that students and staff can download. Uh, the charge, as I know you're wondering, is $2.50 for you to have delivered to you anything from Starbucks, Panda Express, Chick-fil-A, or Freddy's, or we have also have a taco place uh, that's in our student center. So essentially what happens is you go to this app, you order the food that you want uh, from our student center, uh, the, the food professionals over there will pop that into this little guy that you see here, and out this thing rolls. Again, we have 13 of them rolling all over campus, all across our 330 acre campus, including to the dorms. 
Uh, and then uh, once it arrives to you as the person who ordered the food, you push a button on your phone and it opens up the food container. So it's been really exciting. Uh, we started this fall semester with 13. Uh, I think we've lost one of them that got hit by a bus or something like that. Um, for those of us who are older, perhaps parents, uh, if you've ever watched and played the game Frogger, it's kind of watching these things cross the street is very similar to watching a game of Frogger. So just something fun, something we like to uh, um, showcase to students. So I talked a little bit about our housing offerings. And so we have three dorms. There are two that are kind of primarily dedicated to freshmen. And so you see those there. For those of you who are interested in living on campus, I can tell you we prioritize uh, freshmen living on campus. Or in, in other words, freshmen kind of get the first crack for the most part to live on campus. We want to make sure that all students who are freshmen have an opportunity, whether you're from Wichita or not, to live in one of our residence halls. Again, all of these are relatively new, less than 10 years old, and they are all very modern in terms of the living experience. We do not have large community style bathrooms where you're sharing a bathroom perhaps with 30 or 40 people. They're all suite style to varying degrees. You might be sharing a bathroom with one to three other people, really just kind of depending on the configuration of the room that you're in. Uh, our housing application, by the way, opened October 1st, so just a couple of days ago. So for those of you who are seniors or transfer students and you want to start that process uh, for next year, you should do that. Um, again, you want to do that between October 1st and December 1st. That gives you the highest priority to uh, for the room selection process when that comes around uh, later in the spring semester. And our director of housing is actually um, on the Zoom tonight, and you'll have an opportunity to meet with her a little bit later if you're interested in that. So what's ahead for Wichita State? We wanted to take just a couple of minutes. I, I, In the interest of time, I might just more specifically talk about two things on this slide. One is we've already opened up in partnership with the Federal Agency of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or ATF. Um, they have already opened up a crime uh, gun intelligence center of excellence right on our campus. And they actually just announced a few other new exciting projects um, for the ATF on our campus. For those of you who might be thinking about majoring in criminal justice or homeland security, forensic science, we have all those programs. Well, guess what? You're gonna have access to some really skilled professionals on our campus and also some applied learning opportunities through that. Um, in addition, we, our president, if he was here, I know he would talk a lot about uh, the second item that's on this slide, and that is our new, or what will be our new biomedical center that we are partnering with the University of Kansas on. And essentially what we're doing here is, if you look at the right-hand part of this slide, we are going to be taking over this space, which is in downtown Wichita. Uh, the city of Wichita just um, passed through the city council meeting uh, a provision for them to lease or sell that land to us, which again is in downtown Wichita, right in the heart of Wichita, where our students and our uh, faculty members will have a brilliant, beautiful new $330 million facility. And what we're doing is we're moving our physician assistant, our nursing program, our physical therapy, a few other programs in there with the University of Kansas Medical School that's already based here in Wichita and also their pharmacy school. And what our president talks about, and by the way, he was a physician assistant in training as well, but he was trained in the Houston medical system. But he talks about when we educate all of our healthcare professionals together in the same space, in other words, we bring together our doctors and our nurses and our physical therapists and all these other professionals, and we train and we educate them in the space, same space, then we improve patient outcomes. And so that's the goal of what we're doing here. So we have an architect or we have multiple architects. We also have multiple buildings on the hook for this. We have more than 200 million secured in funding, and we are going to be breaking ground on this this coming spring semester and with a completion date scheduled for 2026. So we're really excited about this. It's something that we know is going to change healthcare in South Central Kansas. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the nuts and bolts of what you might need to know about applying for admission and the scholarships process at Wichita State. So you can see the admission application checklist here. For those of you who are seniors, perhaps you've already done this. Uh, for those of you who uh, have not done it, there's still, of course, plenty of time. I would highly recommend you do it by October 15th, because if you do, then you'll have some opportunities if you qualify for deeper scholarships. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And that's for high school students. Those of you who might be juniors or sophomores, 
sophomores in high school, you have all the way until July 1st before your senior year to start this process. And then those of you who are transfer students, I would highly encourage you to apply for admission and uh, we'll make sure you're considered uh, for scholarships as long as you apply by uh, February 1st. So uh, related to that, I wanna talk a little bit about our costs and then our, also our scholarships process. So you can see here for a resident of Kansas or students who might qualify for what we call our Shocker City Partnership, you're gonna pay about $9,300 per year. And what that includes is 15 credit hours per semester for the fall and then another 15 for the spring. So about 30 hours to total, which is kind of a typical college load. Um, so if you are a Kansas resident or if you qualify for our in-state rate, then that is the rate you're going to be paying for the year. Uh, we do like to brag that we are the most affordable research university in Kansas. And I just had to recently do some research for this, uh, for the president's office, actually, for a presentation he was doing. And I can affirm that we are actually truly one of the most affordable options in the entire Midwest based off our price point. Our president really just stresses affordability. Um, we want to make sure that uh, our students are getting good return on their investment for higher education. So I'm going to jump forward just a little bit because I want to make sure those of you who are from out of state uh, know that there's a decent chance you might qualify for a tuition discount. So if you are from one of the communities that you see listed here, and there's a couple that are not listed either, but they're in these highlighted states. If you you're from one of these metropolitan areas, then essentially you're going to qualify for in-state tuition rates with no application, no criteria you have to meet. We just put it on to your record at Wichita State that you're going to pay in-state tuition rates. And by the way, it's open to all majors and, and, and also graduate school for that matter too, for anyone who's looking at graduate education. So there's really good news in that. And hopefully you see uh, your community listed there. You can see a full listing of all the communities at the website, wichita.edu slash shocker savings. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, for those of you who might be from other areas outside those uh, cities that I mentioned, we do have additional discounts available for you. Just go to that same one website that you see listed there, wichita.edu slash shocker savings, and you can uh, see what you might qualify for. There are some other discount opportunities, but we've obviously focused these slides on the Midwest um, because we, of course, know that's where many of our students tend to come from. But uh, again, if you don't see your state uh, listed here, don't worry, there might be some other opportunities. So just go to that website and you can kind of check out what the savings opportunities may be. So I'm going to jump forward to scholarships uh, because I know that's so important to all of us. So for those of you who are high school seniors, and if you apply for admission um, earlier in the process, then uh, we're actually rolling out freshman scholarship awards already. Our financial aid team has some sent somewhere north of $2.5 million in scholarship offers in the mail already to this year's high school senior class. Uh, perhaps you've already received that offer if you're a high school senior who's been admitted. Uh, then the good news for transfer students is we also will uh, be awarding transfer scholarships, not necessarily this month, but in the relatively near future too. And so just know that once you're admitted, we'll automatically consider you for scholarships based off of a couple of different ways. Uh, on my next slide, uh, you can see here that this is the scholarship breakdown for students who would be high school students. Um, we have a couple of ways we can look at this. Uh, if you're able to provide us with your GPA and your standardized test score, then you can see we have some deeper scholarships packages, but if for whatever reason you have not uh, taken a standardized test or you don't want to provide that score to us, we do have some GPA only academic scholarships available too that you see listed at the bottom row there. So lots of great ways for students to get connected to freshman merit scholarships, uh, but I also want to mention that the scholarship universe that's listed on the right hand uh, side of this slide gives all students, whether they're incoming freshmen or transfer students, an opportunity to way more scholarships as well. Well, so Scholarship Universe is a national scholarship platform that Wichita State is a member of, where if you go in and create your profile once you're admitted, that will give you an opportunity to match against Wichita State scholarships you qualify for, and again, regional and national scholarships too. So it's really important students go out and create their profile uh, because it really unlocks additional opportunities to students. By the way, for those of you who may have filed the FAFSA before or are just um, unfamiliar with that process, 
process know that the federal government um, made some changes to the FAFSA process that uh, all universities are adjusting to for this fall. Um, but what that means is the FAFSA will not open until December. And so I know our financial aid team would be more than happy to visit with you if you have specific questions. A lot of things are kind of um, being built and, and developed uh, nationally as we go here. So a lot of universities are making sure they're doing their best to prepare students and families for that. But just know that unlike previous years, the FAFSA is not opening or did not open October 1st. It actually will not open until sometime in December. And we actually don't even have that date yet from the federal government. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. I do want to make sure I tell our high school students that uh, we do offer a really large and prestigious scholarship competition called the DSI, the Distinguished Scholarship Invitational, where we provide three sixty-four thousand dollars scholarships. Uh, that's the top prize. But for those students who compete, there's a chance that you might, if you don't win one of those, we have about seventy-five to eighty other scholarships through this process. So you can see the website listed there. There is an on-campus component to it, uh, and it's on Saturday, November eighteenth. There's some things you have to do in advance of that. Uh, the bottom line is, is if you meet this academic criteria and you apply for admission by October 15th, then we will send you everything you need to know about uh, competing in this particular scholarship process. Our co academic colleges and some of our departments also offer additional scholarship opportunities. I wish I had the time to explain all of these to you, but I just want to make sure you know that they exist uh, beyond just those freshman merit scholarships that I mentioned earlier and even beyond that distinguished scholarship invitation I just mentioned. So you're welcome to take a screenshot of this slide or a picture with your phone and get more information. But if you go to that website that's listed at the bottom, which ta.edu slash scholarship competitions, it really gives you the full rundown there. I do want to mention this is only for Kansas students, so just Kansas students be aware of this. If you meet the criteria for this, there is a separate foundation that's not a Wichita State Foundation, but it's called the Rudd Foundation that is based in Wichita, where they are offering up to 40 full ride scholarships to new freshmen uh, in Kansas next fall. You have to go to one of four Kansas universities, and we're excited that Wichita State is one of them. We were one of the founding members, and we have more than 60 Rudd scholars on our campus uh, today more than the other schools actually. So what I will tell you is it's a full ride scholarship. It includes tuition, fees, and on-campus housing for four years. And beyond that, there's a tremendous mentorship and networking component to it as well. Their application just opened over this last weekend. Again, just for Kansas students who are Pell Grant eligible, you would be able to check that out um, uh, on, on uh, the website that you see listed right there. Okay, last thing, um, you see we offer a full range of student activities and student life, and rather than belaboring the point on this slide, I'm just going to show you a quick 60-second clip that showcases the first two weeks of student life on campus. <laughs> the first two weeks of student life on campus just last fall semester. Okay, before I transition over to our student ambassadors, we're actually now going to transition and give you an opportunity to visit with our colleagues from our academic colleges and departments. So what we have done is, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see a little better here. Um, what we have done is we have turned on the break uh, out function where you students and families, you can choose which room you would like to go to. Um, it should be at the bottom of your screen or Sloan, if you want to jump on and explain this, you can probably do this better. I, perhaps what will happen is you'll see the breakout room options come in up in front of you. Um, you're able to choose which room you would like to join. Sloan, additional instructions on this? I don't have any. Um, yeah, if they go to more, more in breakout rooms, you should be able to um, join the breakout room you are interested in joining. 
So if you are looking for the function, it's on the Zoom control tab uh, under more, and then you'll see all of the breakout room options that are available. You can select the one that you are interested in, uh, and then someone, one of our professionals from that area will be able to host a quick session with you um, and answer any questions you may have. So it looks like folks are getting sorted into their breakout rooms. If you need help, uh, just um, put it in the chat and we'll see if we can get you to the right place. So if you are staying in this room and you just have general questions, we are happy to help you with that. Uh, I see a student has asked a question. I heard that there was something where you have to go to an H or you could go to an HBCU through this school and you can do that. I don't, is NSC one of our breakout rooms, Sloan? I don't think it is. I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, I can talk is that about National that. Student Exchange? Yep, yep. Uh, study Abroad is here. I know there are two different programs, but um, Seal, I don't think that they're here. Yeah, I know S SEAL is here though, right? Correct, yes. So uh, let's see. I think that was, lost the name of who asked that question. So London, you can go to the SEAL room. They might be able to help you with that, but I'll give you a quick high level answer because I can answer that actually. So the National Student Exchange Program is available for Wichita State students to choose another university. There's about 200 to choose from across the US and also in US territories in Canada where students get to attend those schools for a semester or a year. Uh, and that's while paying your regular tuition rate at, to Wichita State. So for example, if you're from Kansas or you're, if you're from one of those discount areas like the or city areas and you pay in-state tuition rates, then yes, you could potentially go to an HBCU. There are several that are members of that program. Uh, the website is wichita.edu slash NSE, as in National Student Exchange. So I'll put that in the chat just so you have it. Our SEAL team, um, not like Navy SEALs, but S-E-A-L uh, here at Wichita State, they uh, coordinate that process um, uh, through the, some of the student affairs offices. So they might be able to help you with more questions, but I'm happy to answer questions too. But I'll put that website on here uh, and I think it'll connect you with what you're looking for. And if there's other questions, we're happy to answer those. You can throw them through the chat um, or if there's anything in particular that you need guidance on, just let us know. Uh, okay, so Michaela, did we, I don't know if we got you squared away, uh, you're asking which breakout room for graphic design, I would go to the College of Fine Arts room. And again, if you're hanging out in here and you have questions or if there's something we can help you with, we're happy to do that. London, how's your physical therapy program? Uh, you're welcome to go to our College of Health. Do we have a College of Health Professions breakout room? Sorry, I can't see all the breakout rooms where I'm at. I believe Neil from our office is in that breakout room um, and he can try to answer any questions we might have in there. Okay. 
Um, so just a high level overview, our College of Health Professions houses our physical therapy program. So what you may not know is that you have to first achieve a bachelor's degree in order to apply for that advanced or graduate degree. Uh, many students tend to major in something like exercise science or human performance studies as their first major as, at the undergraduate level. And then during that process, you'll have an advisor from our College of Health Professions who can provide coaching and advising on how to start Start the application process for the physical therapy school. So again, we offer it at Wichita State. Uh, I believe there might be one other school that offers it in the state of Kansas. So depending on where you're from and, and perhaps where you want to go to graduate school, you'd have to pursue some additional options. Typically, students will apply to multiple uh, schools if they're interested in physical therapy. Uh, so Kevin is asking, are there any majors that are close to sports broadcasting for baseball? Uh, I think there's probably a couple of ways to tackle that. And Neil may have unique insight. He's a huge baseball fan. So Neil, if you have unique insight, feel free to uh, add to that. Couples that, uh, that I throw out to you. First, we have an Elliott School of Communication. And through the Elliott School of Communication, we do some emphasis in broadcasting, journalism, uh, but it also houses integrated marketing and a few other majors like that. And so we have had some students that have been specifically interest in broadcasting. Uh, they also have some podcast um, uh, spaces that are available for students too. So that's probably one way to go or consider uh, through our Elliott School of Communication. And by the way, is just kind of a side note, we have had um, some, some of our Elliott School students go through um, some dual programs where they get some additional training. So as, as one example, um, I know a couple of individuals who got their broadcasting emphasis from Wichita State, but then they did some additional um, courses from another university to get meteorology. And so they wanted to be a meteorologist on air broadcast. And so they got that experience uh, partially through our Elliott School of Communication. Uh, so I would just offer that to you. Uh, but in addition to that, if you are really interested in sports, the sport management program at Wichita State is actually really well known nationally. Uh, sport management is basically everything that goes on outside of the court or the field or whatever the playing space is. So if you think about selling tickets or marketing sports or funding sports, um, how to organize the logistics for sports. Um, we have a major that actually uh, um, pr uh, provides that instruction and that information. It's really popular. We actually tend to see students from all over the world um, study sport management with us at Wichita State. Uh, some of our graduates have gone on to direct the um, National College Football Playoff System, uh, the NCAA tournament, both men's and women's. Um, a couple of the NBA general managers these days are graduates of the sport management program at Wichita State. Uh, some of our grads have even uh, directed Super Bowls. Um, so pretty, um, pretty well known program for us nationally. Uh, let's see the nursing program. Uh, oh, and thank you, Lauren, um, the sport management program, you can get more information about that and the applied studies breakout room. Um, I'm happy to talk about the nursing program unless Lauren or Neil or Sloan, you want to talk about it. But um, what I would offer for your interest in the School of Nursing, first of all, is if you are still a high school student and uh, that we have something called a guaranteed placement program, where essentially you can kind of get an early spot in our School of Nursing when you're ready and you've completed all of the nursing school prerequisites. Um, that's something you can explore uh, through our College of Health Professions. It's really competitive. So for our School of Nursing, they have 60 spots available in the fall and 60 spots available in the spring. So um, it's highly competitive, but for those students who are, have secured one of those guaranteed spots, uh, you are able to uh, know that your spot is there. You just have to make certain progress um, through all of your prerequisites for nursing in order to be able to secure and maintain that spot. Um, we'll put a link in the chat uh, to learn more about that guaranteed placement program for nursing, uh, but we do have a really uh, robust school of nursing. Our students have um, good opportunities for clinical rotations at one of our major hospitals. We have uh, multiple major hospitals here in the Wichita area. Uh, let's see. And we had a question about sport management earlier. I'm trying to remember who asked that. I think it might have been London. I don't see London on here anymore. I was going to say you could cover that if you wanted to, Mika. Okay, did I cover all the questions in the chat? Uh, 
Uh, unfort I, I don't think our we have anyone from our College of Health Professions that's here tonight. Am I right, Sloan? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, we don't have anyone in there. So I think they're going to be popping back into this space. Um, thank you, Lauren, for popping that um, guaranteed placement program info out there. Oh, perfect. You can hear me. I was trying to unmute yeah. to talk about the nursing program, but oh, then you, yeah, feel free. you stole my thunder. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, feel free because you yeah, probably do it more regularly than me. Um, I, and I'm not sure if I'm going to say your name correctly. Plumetti. Um, Plumetti is still here. So it's certainly if there's something I missed, feel free to add in. Uh, sorry, we turned off the unmute function so folks couldn't just jump in, but you, you should be good now. That is a okay. Yeah, our nursing program is great. Um, to talk about, like Bobby said, with that guaranteed nursing program, because we do have the program where it's pre nursing and then we reapply um for that sophomore year to go in. So definitely something to look into so that you know going in, um, you do have that guaranteed placement. And like we talked about earlier, really very hands on when it comes to our nursing program, and so just really great hands on work. Um, when it comes to, you know, whichever specialty or what you're thinking about um for our nursing program, so. Um, there's a lot more information we can definitely get for you. So um, feel free to ask any more questions or we can send you some links as well um, that can really um, go into more detail when it comes to that program for sure. And while we're waiting, since we have a couple minutes, what I'm going to do, since we've had a couple of questions about nursing in our College of Health Professions, um, we just launched a virtual tour, although we're kind of in edit mode right now, so it's not made open to the public just yet. But what I can do is show, if I get this to work, just a second, I could show you one of our facilities uh, that houses our College of Health Professions. This thing is not cooperating with me though. One second. Let's 
it's things that want to work for me. This is why we haven't made it public yet, because we're still working out some of the bugs. There we go. Okay. There it was in here. So our staff hasn't even seen this yet. So this will be the first time some of you get to see this too. So here is a look at a space that uh, some of our physical therapy and uh, physician assistant, or uh, really it's been called the physician associate program, get to train. This is in our Old Town campus, and meaning it's uh, close to downtown Wichita. So you can see here uh, a glimpse of a simulated uh, exam room uh, where our students can uh, typically practice on each other, uh, but we also have some simulated machines where our students are able to um, kind of get uh, various metrics in terms of breathing and uh, other things in terms of diagnosis. Um, so this is just a look into the center of um, one of the spaces here. This isn't necessarily for nursing majors, although I believe there are times where they're doing some cross training in this space. And if you're wondering, normally Wushok is not, our mascot is not there, uh, but he was just uh, there for a photo shoot we were doing. Okay, for those of you who are on and not in a breakout room, is there anything else you'd like to see um, while we're waiting? Uh, so, uh, Mikhail asked a question. I heard you mention freshman year priority in campus housing, but are there any requirements to live on campus? So, yes, uh, freshmen are required to live on campus, uh, but certain students are exempted. So, if, for example, you are from the Wichita area or the greater Wichita area, then you are automatically exempted because we know that many of our local students tend to live at home for their first year. And so we kind of try to make it as simple as possible by taking out that um, automatic requirement from your record. However, for students who are from outside the greater Wichita area, then yes, you are required to live on campus. Um, and we do prioritize freshman housing, as you mentioned there, meaning that we'll make sure that we can essentially accommodate all freshmen to live on campus who have a desire and interest to do so. And since we're talking about housing, I'll just use this opportunity to show off our little virtual tour. Uh, quite, Michaela asks a follow-up here. How about, about, how about from outside of the area, but able to live with family in Wichita? Oh, I understand your question now. Um, there are exceptions. There's an exception process that you can go through. So depending on the link with the family member, um, you can go through our housing and residence life team to request a exception to the rule on that. Uh, Neil, thank you for the prompt, is asking if I touched on Shocker Studios. I did not, but what I can do is, if I get this thing to work, um, is maybe show you that. Oh, 
or not. I can just not show it to you. <laughs> I can't get this thing to click over since I'm recording. It limits what I can do since I'm recording. Sloan, about how much time do we have left on the clock here to for the breakout rooms? Um, we have until 8.10. Okay, so a few more minutes, several more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, figured out a way to cheat the system here. Okay, so Neil mentioned our Shocker Studios. I can get that to show real quick. So anyone who might be interested, this is a cool exclusive studio in South Wichita that our students who are media art majors have access to. Um, this is actually a giant studio, specifically a room where you can see different sets that are available for our students who might be majoring in filmmaking uh, or audio production. Uh, they get to have these experiences with real equipment, real sets. Um, they've actually used this space to film commercials, uh, film short uh, films. Um, it's a really great space. You're only seeing, honestly, a really small portion of it. But through this, these particular studios, we also have audio production, game design, animation, and acting for film too. So kind of a unique space. While I'm here, I might as well just show off a couple of other things. We've talked a little bit about the dorms. Uh, here is an exterior look. Um, actually from the interior, but you can see the exterior sides of the building. Um, so this is in the courtyard and it's looking at Shocker Hall, which is um, probably our primary dorm. It has about 800 beds uh, for uh, freshmen to live. And so there's also a dining hall that's attached. So you're getting a little bit of a glimpse of the courtyard here. Uh, we found that our students tend to hang out there in between classes or certainly in the evening, it becomes a really popular gathering spot for students to just hang out and have fun. Here is an interior look at the dining hall. So this is where our students get to eat every day. Uh, students who live on campus um, are required to have a meal plan. And so students uh, will eat in this space every single day. Um, you can see just a little bit of it, actually. There's all kinds of stations that uh, didn't make it into this particular shot. Uh, but that includes uh, what you can see here is a salad bar, um, another spot where they offer uh, grilled chicken burgers, veggie burgers. Um, there's a brunch bar, as you can see, there that's open pretty much around the clock but then uh, pastry cereal that you're seeing pop up and here in just a second the international cuisine will also pop up so uh, the key here is choices students who live in the residence halls get unlimited meals um, presuming you bought that particular meal plan and freshmen are required to buy it so um, really a majority of our students take advantage of that and you can go in as often as you'd like so if you'd like to go in four or five times a day you can do that sometimes students just go in to grab an ice cream cone and you can do that too so it's another option there I'm going to move along here. I want to showcase our YMCA because this might be of interest to people. This is our relatively new on-campus YMCA, and there are 10 uh, first class YMCA facilities in our greater Wichita community, and the newest one is the one you're looking at here. This is on our campus. Our students, as part of the cost and experience of being a student, have access to this facility, so there's no extra cost for it. It's just kind of baked in to the price of being a student. So even our mascot works out there. He's lifted a lot of weight, as you can tell right there, right? Um, so you can see that here. And sorry, I'm trying to keep the camera straight for you. Um, sorry to keep straight. There we go. And it overlooks our softball stadium too right behind here so this treadmill so uh, kind of a cool way to take in the action for a softball game too well, we're 
still got a few minutes here, so I'm going to show off some other spots here on campus. This is our student center, our Radigan student center, so popular gathering spot, as you could probably imagine. Uh, I want to actually show you the interior here, though. Um, so this is where students uh, have opportunities to eat. You can kind of see a Panda Express in the distance there, but there's also a Chick-fil-A. And in just a second, the camera's going to pan around to a Freddy's. So lots of choices. There's also a Starbucks just down the hall there, uh, in addition to our Shocker store. So something that's available to our students too. Keep skipping ahead. Here's a peek at our Charles Koch Arena, which is where our men's and women's basketball team play. Uh, in addition to that, our volleyball team has their games going on right now, this fall sports season. Um, so that's, uh, as I mentioned, I think I may have mentioned earlier, uh, students get free tickets to all of our home athletic competitions. Uh, already shown that. I'm gonna try to show off something else that we haven't seen just yet. This to work right. For anyone who might be interested in honors, here is a look at our Honors College Lounge. Uh, so our students can access this lounge 24-7, whether or not you live on campus. It's located in one of our dorms, but our students can actually access it 24-7, uh, and they can utilize, there's a computer lab space, there's some private study rooms, seminar rooms. There's also refrigerators and microwaves. So if you just need a place to put your lunch while you're walking around campus, or if you want to eat your lunch in the space provided, then you can do so. There's also free printing in this honors lounge too. So uh, our students find that it's a really good place for both individual study, but also group study too. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here. Now we're getting ready to end our breakouts. Bobby, would you like me to close the rooms? Uh, yeah. Um, are you able to send a message to them? Maybe just to let them know we'll be closing in a minute if they want to just wind down their conversations. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you. trying to get all of our student ambassadors pinned so then that way when their camera shows, we can see them. So just bear with me if you, some of the views change here. Okay, you wanna bring them all back, Sloan? Yes, I can get them closed. Thanks.
All right. We've slowly got people coming back to the room here. Uh, our next segment is going to provide an opportunity for you to engage with our student ambassadors who are volunteers, but current Wichita State students, and they're able to answer just about any question under the sun about what it's like to be a student at Wichita State. So I'm going to let all of these rooms finish up closing. Sloan, I can't tell if all the rooms, oh, okay, there we go. There's a big jump right there. I believe they had a minute to uh, leave that breakout room, so okay. that should be wrapping up here soon. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we've got just about everyone back from breakout rooms. Hopefully you got additional information on things that were of interest to you. Uh, but now it's our my great pleasure to welcome our student ambassadors uh, to the forefront. Uh, I'm gonna ask them to show their camera because I'm gonna try to pin everyone. Uh, so then that way your video feeds are popping up uh, so everyone can see them. Uh, but that being said, our student ambassadors are volunteers. They're current Wichita State students. They actually go through an application process in order to, to be here tonight and just in general as members of the uh, organization. Um, they're volunteers and they're here because they are passionate about their experiences at Wichita State and they're willing and excited to talk with prospective students like you all about what it's like to be a student. So uh, I'm hopeful that you all might think of some questions that you want to ask our students. They're giving up part of their night to be here um, and really be uh, as a service for all of you. So I'll give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, students, if you could tell us uh, of course, your name, your major, your hometown, and uh, you can choose, we'll kind of do, a. you can choose uh, your favorite place to eat on campus, your favorite place to study on campus, or some other fun activity that you like to do at Wichita State. I'll let you pick out of those three. So, uh, Kaylin, I see you. So, can I start with you? Oh, sorry. I'm going to have to unmute everybody. Okay. Now, there you go. Okay, awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Kaylin Richardson. I'm currently a sophomore studying elementary education. Um, I'm from Blue Springs, Missouri, which is about 20 minutes east of Kansas City. And one of my favorite things to do or be a part of on campus is intramural sports. Awesome. Thank you, Kaylin. Uh, Grace? Hello, everyone. My name is Grace. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. And... I have so many favorite places to study on campus. I feel like I have a different one every semester, but this semester it's been the library. There's so many different spots within the library. I just keep going to different places. Great, thank you, Grace. Who's next, Natasha? Oh, not letting you share, let me try it again. Okay, hi. Um, my name is Natasha Senevirathna. I'm a computer science student from Wichita, Kansas, and my favorite place to study is the Honors College. Great. Thank you, Maya. Hi, I'm Maya Douglas. I'm an, in, a mechanical engineering student, uh, first year, and I'm from near Dallas-ish area. Um, one of my favorite things to do on campus right now is I am working with Go Wave Go to build a uh, toy car thing for um, a disabled kid. Or go baby go, right? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, Damon? Hi, I'm Damian Ullman. I'm from, I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm from Tuttle, Oklahoma. And right now my favorite place to study is the Geeks Tutoring Lounge. Great. And I am probably missing other student ambassadors. Can you uh, throw something in the chat and I'll try to unmute you? <laughs> I just can't. I've got four sheets of people here, so I'm trying to scroll through and find everyone. So I apologize. Throw something in the chat and I'll try to unmute you or Sloan or if someone else you see it. If you can give them power to unmute themselves, that would be great. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start off uh, with a quick question. We've had a couple of questions about living on campus, so I was hoping maybe a couple of you could talk about that experience. Uh, maybe, Maya, it's kind of fresh for you right now living on campus. Um, can you talk about um, maybe the roommate finding process, how you found your roommates, um, and then also the room selection process, and maybe what you like or enjoy about living on campus? Oh. 
Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I currently in my dorm room right now, actually. Um, I live in Shocker Hall right now. Um, the roommate experience was pretty, pretty nice for me. Uh, I did the, through the portal in the Wichita housing portal. And I just got assigned with um, a person and I just like, we just texted for like a day and they were like, cool, you want to be roommates? And it like worked out pretty well. Um, I'm pretty sure Damien's like down the hall from me. So I don't know if he, he wants to talk um, or not, but yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I'm in a suite style dorm. So I have my roommate and then across the bathroom I share, I have two other uh, people that I like to call suite mates. And yeah. Great. The roommate process went very similar to me for me. Um, I uh, We got on to the housing portal and I was reading through uh, some applications. So on that portal, you fill out a questionnaire and based off of your degree or if you become part of the living learning community, you'll be you can be limited to some of your choices, but there's always a lot of people to choose from. And so I started reading through and I found two, three, I found one person and start chatting with him. And it's been a great match. We've been getting along great. We hang out all the time. Then he found our other two roommates and we've just hit it off amazingly. We like to go hang out together and I haven't regretted staying on campus. I don't think I ever will. It's been a great opportunity for me to get, know, get to know people. Great. Thanks, Damien. Anyone else want to speak to that question? We covered it. Okay. Uh, Grace, I know you've had some unique experiences through the College of Engineering with uh, applied learning. Um, can you speak to those a little bit? I've talked a lot about it, but it's important they hear from someone who's been living and breathing it. Yes, absolutely. So one thing I wanted to get uh, into even before I started college was research. And so through the Honors College and the College of Engineering, I was able to get started doing that. In my second semester at Wichita State, I was part of the FIO program, and then ever since, I've continued on in the research lab uh, in the mechanical engineering department. And so the work that I've been doing is about solar cell materials, so I get to make solar cells and test them and read a lot of articles and learn about the research being done in that field. So that's been super interesting. And then I've also gotten to do three internships at Textron Aviation. So each summer, I've been in a different um, group or department. And um, I've learned a lot that way. Oh, thank you, Terrence. FIRE is the first year research experience. So in October of your first year at Wichita State, you'll get the opportunity to apply for that. And then it starts, it's, it basically runs through the whole spring semester. So your second semester at Wichita State, you could be part of this program. And it's, for, it's not just for STEM, or traditional STEM majors, it's for all majors really that have uh, research being done in that field to learn more about how to do research and then be paired with a faculty mentor and you get to work in the lab for the whole semester. So I think it's a super cool opportunity because often um, people think that research is something for people further along in college, but it's super cool to see how that's something you can pursue throughout college at Wichita State. Thank you, Grace. Uh, Natasha, would you mind speaking to her? I know you have had experience working on campus. Can you speak about that and how you secure that role? Yeah, um, so I work at the National Institute for Aviation Research. Um, it's close to Innovation Campus where a lot of other engineering jobs are. Uh, I think it's really nice. Uh, I can just go to my class and whenever I have free time, go to work and earn a little bit of money. I don't have to commute very far. It's literally just walking across campus. Um, as far as getting that job, there's a lot of career fairs uh, held throughout um, the school year. Uh, some of them are specific to like engineering or um, business or whatever field you're interested in, but there are a lot of general ones. And I know my company is at those very often. You can hear those through the Shocker Career Accelerator emails, as well as like the general, um, I, I the name is- Shocker Blast. Yes, <laughs> Shocker Blast. Yeah, thank you, but yeah. That's the that's a uh, weekly email that hits our students' uh, inboxes and provides updates and announcements uh, that are important for students to be aware of. 
uh, before we, uh, Daniel's asking a good question, um, but Kaylin, I know you have a job on campus too. I want to give you an opportunity to chat. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about um, perhaps the, the the balance of working on campus as opposed to off campus? All right, so I actually have two on-campus jobs at the moment. I They're both through the admissions office, one giving tours, um, and then I also have an internship with concurrent enrollment, so I work with area high schools. Um, so basically, um, kind of that balance, I'm taking 19 credit hours this semester, so I'm pretty much maxing out the numbers number of classes that I can take, and so I found it really important just to make sure that I allow time for myself to do those classes. I'm all online this semester, so whether it means waking up early in the morning before I go to work, work or doing them in the um, kind of off times that I have during work or in the evening. Um, I make sure to prioritize. I set a goal for myself to have all my classes done by Thursday, um, just so I can make sure if I need to finish some stuff up um, before Saturday or Sunday, I can. Um, but just making sure I write everything, all my assignments out each week so I know what I have to get done. Um, so I'm not going to miss any assignments either, just because I do really prioritize my grades. And so I make sure I meet all those deadlines and know all of those deadlines while also still being able to work on campus. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Kaylin. Daniel asked, uh, I don't know if anyone is doing intramurals, but uh, if you wanted to, if you are, and if you want to speak to this, uh, but Daniel's asking if someone could outline how intramural sports work or teams random uh, or based on the dorm you live in. Uh, and Lauren put a good link through the chat, but does anybody want to answer that live? Anyone speak to that? Go ahead. Oops, sorry, do I got to help you out there? Okay, so I grew up playing softball. I played since I was about four, and I actually took an academic scholarship over an athletic scholarship somewhere else. Um, so I kind of winded down my softball career, but knew I still wanted to be involved. And so one of those ways is through intramurals. Um, and so the process, like, um, I know your question was kind of um, about how the teams work. So basically, you can sign on as a free agent, as like, is um, that's what we call it. Um, so they'll just place you on a team, but you can also, um, if, so for instance, for softball, we need nine people to play. So if you know eight others, you can create your own team. Um, we have that um, softball this year was, or last year was actually co-ed, or you could do a fraternity sorority league as well. So if you're involved in Greek life or want to get involved in Greek life, they have um, some different intramurals for you as well. Um, but for mine, it was co-ed. So we had um, we, I just knew a couple friends and they knew a couple friends and we just combined our teams together. And so that's how we formed our teams. And we played once a week. Most intramurals will only play once a week for maybe an hour or two. So it's not a big time commitment. So um, if you're still trying to have that school life balance, um, it's, intramurals is a, is a great way to get involved. Great. Thanks, Kaylin. Uh, all right. Try to make sure I get all the questions here. Uh, can someone talk about GoCreate and how they might use those resources? Does anybody use GoCreate? Okay, Natasha, I'm going to unmute you. You can just stay unmuted if that's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I've used GoCreate Go um, a little bit. I have an, a, um, an ID there, but um, as far as how it works, you kind of just walk in, you sign in, um, they give you like a general rundown of whatever machine you're planning to use. Uh, so for me, I had a moment where I wanted to use the t-shirt printing um, machine. So I let them know they set me up with a class so I could get like trained on it. And then um, I was cleared to go in and create whatever I wanted to. There are some things that you don't need like training for, like using a printer, um, not the 3D printers, but like just paper printers. Uh, um, those you don't really need training for, but it really is just like talking to the front desk and letting them know what you want to be um, using their resources for, and then they'll just get you hooked up with the classes that you need. Great. And just a quick high level overview, GoCreate is a maker space, if you're familiar with that concept, where they have 3D printers, they have textiles, so you can make t-shirts, uh, they have woodworking equipment, uh, lots of different equipment. So if you have an idea where you want to make something, there's a decent chance we've got the equipment and all students are able to tap that membership, that access for free, no additional cost outside of just being a regular student. Okay, uh, there was a question that I think we've kind of answered in the chat. Uh, 
uh, about a campus visit on October 14th. We do offer campus visits throughout the week and also occasionally on Saturdays, and we can put a link through the chat for that. Uh, but we also offer uh, black and yellow days that are coming up. There's one this Friday, uh, and then there, and that's October 6th. And then there's also one on Friday, October 20th. So if you're looking for an excuse or a way to see our campus uh, in a really broad way, because uh, we open up the doors, there's lots you get to see those particular days, October 6th and 20th. Uh, then you might consider registering for those. You can find the link for it at wichita.edu slash visit. Uh, and again, we'll put that in the chat so you can find that. I think Sloan is handling that question specifically, though. Uh, other questions that our, our guests and audience can uh, or have for our students. And if you'll just throw it through the chat, I'll try to make sure we cover it. Uh, Daniel asks, can someone speak on living in a living learning community versus in a basic dorm? Does anybody want to cover that? I can. Um, yeah. I'm currently in the engineering LLC, um, which is living learning community. And um, basically, it's just like living in a normal dorm for the most part, except for everyone around you is um, kind of a part of like a similar group as you. So there's like honors, LLCs, uh, business, engineering, um, just a ton of different, uh, different kinds. Um, and there's engineering, there's like engineering LLC specific events. So if you're an LLC, you'll have specific events that you get to go to that all the people in your hallway or whatnot will also be able to go to. So. Yeah, and I can speak that on that a little bit as well. I stayed in the College of Applied Studies LLC my first year, so last year um, at Wichita State. And so on my floor is a lot of education majors, but along with those sports management majors as well. Um, and so I really was drawn to it just for the networking opportunities. Um, I was able to meet people that were going to be in my classes, um, especially I see them all the time still just because we are a pretty small college so we are able to see each other um, pretty often so I was able to make those connections with my peers but I was also able to make those connections um, with professors as well so we had a little meet and greet with different professors in the College of Applied Studies so I was made, able to make those connections early on um, and meet those people uh, and meet those professors that I was going to see for the rest of my college career so then I'm able to have that um, relationship and kind of have that um, kind of connection with all of the people that I'll see and so I was able to kind of kind of feel more comfortable um, especially my roommate was an education major as well um, and so we were able to um, form those relationships and continue those my for my next three years all right Xander asked a question uh, when do we start uh, getting set up with uh, for upcoming freshmen to start working on your schedules uh, I might just field that one uh, so basically if you are a high school senior and you're planning to enroll here next fall semester fall 2024 we'll actually reach out to you in the spring and explain that process the short of it is though that we will send you the instructions and information you need to start a enrollment questionnaire we typically unlock that on March 1st of your senior year to where we'll ask you questions that vary and they might include things like what days do you want to take classes what college credit have you already earned in high school um, what types of classes do you want to take uh, are you a morning person are you an afternoon person so then that way we're going to start building a schedule for you we have professional advisors from our one-stop team that go out and build schedules for students then they will essentially send you the instructions on how to access that schedule you'll determine if that meets your needs and if you are like you know what i'm not an eight o'clock person and i'm not going to take that chemistry lab at eight uh, then they'll do their best to rework it if there's other classes available they'll send you the information so you kind of just go back and forth until we have a schedule for you and then we do the hard work behind the scenes we actually get you enrolled but then next summer you'll have to come to campus for an orientation program so hopefully that kind of explains that but essentially we do a lot of the work behind the scenes for you and we'll send you information in the spring semester that outlines what the process and steps are all right, I'm trying to make sure as we're in our home stretch here. Uh, Damien, I'm not sure if you were trying to unmute earlier, uh, but if there's something you wanted to add to a question that was uh, asked, please feel free while I go through all these questions. I was going to add more to the LLC. So for my floor, I'm part of the engineering LLC as well, and not everyone in that floor will always be part of your major. For instance, I have a pre-med major in my dorm, and I'm part of the engineering LLC. 
And that worked out just because uh, our fourth roommate ended up canceling and he needed a place to go. So he was in here and that worked well. It was someone with different interests who helps branch us out sometimes. So don't always be afraid to get out of your LLC if you do want to, if you join one as well, because you can meet a lot of cool people who aren't part of your program. Great. Thank you, Damien. Uh, Cohen asks, with the FAFSA delayed until December, will financial aid awards be delayed? So um, I know Jiang is still on, so uh, she may have something to add to this, uh, but I'll start out at least with the basic response. Uh, student, we're encouraging students to complete and submit their FAFSA uh, by March 1st. Uh, so again, FAFSA will open sometime in December. We do not have a date. No one has a date of when the federal government will open that up in December, but by law, they have to open it in December. Uh, once it's open, we again would ask that you submit your FAFSA and indicate that you want your results sent to Wichita State by March 1st. And then in my conversations with our financial aid team, I believe they hope to send out award letters um, as quickly as possible after that March uh, 1 deadline. So Jang, if you're still around and you would add to that question, feel free to uh, do so. I can unmute you in case you need to do that. Oh, and she put something <laughs> in the chat. Go ahead. Yeah, we're working to, once we hear the official date, our, our team is ready to just work hard to get all of that packaging and things awarded for students. And uh, it, it'll be interesting. You, you may see uh, if you know a financial aid staff member, whether at Wichita State or someone else, you know, be very patient with them because they have to deal with a lot, all of these changes from the federal government. And then it's not just as simple as implementing those changes. We have to wait for our systems to catch up. We work with third party vendors to help us with our systems. So it's kind of a, a, a multi-step process. It's not unfortunately just as simple as they turn it on and then we can do everything. Um, so I would just encourage you to, to love on your financial aid person, be patient with them, uh, but they want to get answers and, and information to our students as quickly as possible. Okay, I think we've kind of exhausted mo of the questions that I'm seeing. Uh, wait, I see one. I noticed a slide about the YMCA membership and a bus pass. Can you speak more about that? Does anybody want else want to speak to that? Um, I can speak on that. So I use the YMCA. All students at Wichita State get a free YMCA membership that not only works um, on the YMCA on campus, but all the Wichita area YMCAs as well. Um, so you're able to go off campus. Some of them have like little water parks. So in the summer, if you want to go to the pool um, with um, like slides and stuff, you can use that at some of our area YMCAs. Um, but you're able to access the YMCA for free. Um, I'm there pretty much almost every day. So I get to go in there um, and I scan my YMCA app and go and get a workout in. Um, so you don't have to pay for that membership. So that does save you a little bit of money. And then you also get a free bus, like um, to get on the bus, you don't have to pay. You just show your shocker ID and then they'll let you on the bus. Um, and then you don't, again, you don't have to pay. And so you just have to pay attention to those routes. Um, I know it'll take you like directly to Target and it'll drop you off near Walmart as well. But um, there's a QR code on all, all of our bus stops as well that you can scan that you can see the um, routes and then you actually see buses in real time as well. So you're able to kind of plan your, plan your route around your day. Um, and around that bus schedule as well. So both of those are included in your tuition here at Wichita State. What a stealthy good tip. The bus takes you to Target. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone asked about, I uh, missed it. Sorry, I've got to scroll hard through here. Can someone speak to Greek experience on campus? I don't know if any of you can. Uh, Rainy, are you still around? Pick on you, Rainy. I don't know if she's still around. Uh, so I can speak at a high level unless another staff member from the university wants to jump in here who's more of an expert than me. Um, but uh, we do offer a full range of fraternities and sororities on campus. Um, and that's um, through, uh, thank you, Jane. Um, uh, and that's through traditional fraternities and sororities, but we also have multicultural, national panhellenic, interfraternity council. So what that means is, is we have a whole array of fraternities and sororities for students to choose from. Um, the experience looks a little different depending on what type of organization you want to be a part of. Um, so in other words, the, the recruitment process or, or what, what is often known as a rush process is different, really kind of depending on which organization you're looking for. Um, for sororities, uh, kind of the general 
general sororities, what I can tell you is there is a process that you go through uh, during, uh, it's before school starts, I believe is, is how we've done it this year. It's, it's kind of mixes together in my head. It changes from year to year sometimes, but it's before school starts where essentially you have an opportunity to get to know the different chapters we have that are available. Uh, and then um, you match with the sorority that is the best fit for you, meaning that um, they can determine if you are a match for them and then you determine if you are a match from your perspective. Um, there's a big celebration and everyone gets to meet who their future uh, sorority sister is in that example. Fraternity IFC is a little more informal actually where students can have an opportunity to um, kind of as, as they wish go out and meet the different fraternity chapters. Sometimes um, people who are going through that process would only meet with one chapter, um, get to know some of those people in that house, and then decide if that's for them. And then he would sign um, uh, to join that particular chapter. So it's really varied um, what students are admitted to attend Wichita State. We actually send information down the line about getting involved in our Greek community. And typically in the spring semester, before you might enroll here in the fall, you'll get more information about that. And Jang, thank you for putting some more information out there. If anybody else wants to speak to that, feel free from the university. Okay, I think we have exhausted all the questions that I can see. It's hard for me to see the chat and in, in all the stuff that I have access to here. So I apologize if I missed it, but I do wanna take a second just to thank our student ambassadors for joining us. Um, appreciate their perspective. Um, they are very busy, involved in a lot of organizations. They could have been studying tonight, but instead they're here with us. So thank you. I see some applause and thank yous. So thanks to our student ambassadors for joining us. Okay, we are in the home stretch of our program. And so we're just gonna do a couple of fun trivia prizes here and see if uh, um, we can send out some shocker swag to the recipients or to the uh, folks who answer correctly. And I'll just do uh, a few questions. And what I'm looking for is a correct answer in the chat. So um, you're not gonna be able to unmute yourself, but uh, if you wouldn't mind, we'd love it if you wanna share. And we'll record who uh, answered correctly and I'll announce who it was that answer correctly and that way that will give you and that way we'll know who to send um, some shocker swag to so the first question i have uh, a few famous businesses have been founded by wichita state grads we actually have a museum for one of the businesses right on our campus that showcases that and sophia i think was first gosh that moved really fast yeah, Sophia, looks like you were first. Uh, Sophia was correct that Pizza Hut was founded by two brothers who attended Wichita State. Um, they actually founded Pizza Hut in the basement of a fraternity house on campus. Uh, they started serving pizza out of the basement there and then moved into a new building um, elsewhere in the city of Wichita uh, and have built, did build it into this, you know, major conglomerate of pizza chains. And um, ultimately, the original building that they moved into was relocated back to campus. It is now a 400 and square foot museum. It's not a functioning Pizza Hut, uh, but it's actually a museum that's located right behind our Welcome Center uh, where I am tonight. And uh, if you come for a campus visit, you can um, see and learn more about the story of Pizza Hut. It's really kind of a, a crazy, unique story. Okay, next question. Uh, what year did we win the national baseball championship? The Shockers were the national baseball champions. You can Google it. I'm not going to know. 1989, Sophia. Okay, Sophia, you already won a prize, so I'm going to give it to someone else. And the second person that I saw was, I'm probably not going to say this name correctly, but is it Kawan? Uh, Kawan, you are correct that it was 1989. So we'll make sure we get that prize to you. Uh, and I see lots of other people know that answer now too. So I guess some of you are faster Google uh, searchers than others. Uh, last question that I have. Our mascot that you see here is made of what? Sloan is using wheat. Oh my gosh, you guys are so fast. And the first person that I see, <laughs> sorry, it's really hard to look at this little screen. Meg, uh, M-E-G, Meg, you are the correct answer. Um, or at least close enough anyway. It's a shock of wheat. Um, I'm gonna give you that. I can't tell if someone else got the right answer. And Cassie, you know what? You had it correct too. I'm going to give both of you a prize. So Meg and Cassie will send prizes to both of you. So in case you can't see our friend Wu Shock here, Sloan has him as her screensaver there. Um, 
Wushak is a shock of wheat and the history goes such that uh, many, many decades ago, our athletic teams would work wheat harvest here in the middle of Kansas to earn money for athletic equipment and uniforms. And so over time, we became the wheat shockers because so many of our student athletes uh, were working wheat harvest. Uh, and so over the years, we dropped the wheat. And so as I always like to joke and say, he is a bundle of wheat. He's one of a kind mascot. He is not gluten free. He's the opposite of it and he's also the only cannibal mascot that you'll find because if you look closely there's a piece of wheat sticking out of his mouth um so he's a piece of wheat eating wheat um so fun fact all right uh i think that really covers all of our trivia for the night so the last thing i'm going to do is have sloan share her screen because she has a wheel uh, where we are going to pick a $1,000 scholarship winner. And we'll follow up with that student after this. Um, but I will tell you before we spin that wheel, uh, we're really excited that you spent some time with us tonight. Um, uh, for students who stuck around, we're going to be excited to send you a Shocker t-shirt for doing so. Um, we hope you follow up with us. And if you have more questions, we invite you to come to campus and check us out. We think we have a lot to offer and certainly um, seeing it all in person is a great way to do so. So that being said, Sloan, can you spin that wheel for me? You can see we got all your names loaded up. Those of you who have applied. And it looks like Noah Buller is our winner. Congratulations. Yo, he says in the chat. All right. Congratulations, Noah. So we will follow up with you to make sure that is added to your account. So that's all that we had for tonight. I want to thank everyone for joining us. I also want to thank all my university colleagues, including the admissions team who joined us uh, to give up part of their evening to make sure we connected. So um, I'll be around for a couple of minutes here in case anyone has some individual questions. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining. We'll follow up with a link to the recording of this in case you wanted to listen to certain parts of it. Have a great night. Thanks so much.